the fuck going on with y'all man and welcome to the best druid leveling guide for diablo 4. this is my current level 50 druid in world tier 2 doing the capstone dungeon in order to reach world tier 3. And this build kind of has a little bit of everything it does decent damage with its elemental skills has a couple strong defensive layers with fortify and barrier tons of crowd control and even a little bit of mobility plus Turning into a bear and bulldozing everything in front of you feels pretty badass. In this guide, we're going to talk about the skills and how to spend your skill points as you level up, renown and the druid mechanic spirit boons, gear and the stats to look for on the gear, the codex of power and the legendary aspects that can be used with this build, how to level from 1 to 50, and a few tips and tricks to help with your Diablo 4 experience. With that being said, let's go ahead and move on to the first part of the guide. Skills. Here is a level by level blueprint on how to spend your skill points for this build. The basic skill we use for this build is Storm Strike. It doesn't really do that much damage. It's mostly used for spirit generation, crowd control, and applying vulnerable to enemies. The core skill we use is Tornado. This is our main damage skill. If you have the spirit, then use this ability. Also, this skill can bounce off walls, so if played correctly, at times you can deal double the damage. The companion skill we use for this build are Wolves. Pretty easy stuff here. They walk around with you and attack what you attack, and you can also press this ability to deal even more damage to the target you're trying to kill. Another elemental skill we use to stack on top of Tornado is Hurricane. It doesn't do as much damage as Tornado, but it is easier to control and also slows any enemies it hits. The movement skill we use is Trample, which has many uses. It can do damage, send enemies flying, stunning them in the process, and can get you out of a tight situation. However, I found myself using this ability mostly to break out of crowd control and to position better during boss fights. The last skill that we use in our skill bar is our defensive skill, Earthen Bulwark. This skill is great. It gives you barrier and fortify, and also makes you unstoppable for a short amount of time, meaning you cannot be crowd controlled, you know, stunned, slowed, and whatnot. The key passive we take at the bottom of our skill tree is Perfect Storm. This gives us spirit generation and a little bit of extra damage as well. All right, that covers the skills portion of this guide. Next, let's talk about Renown and the Druid mechanic, Spirit Boons. While you're leveling in Diablo 4, you'll notice you get small bits of Renown here and there as you run around in the open world. If you happen to get Renown 3 in every region, which we'll talk about later in the guide how to achieve that, then here's how I would spend those skill points. These passive give us some extra defense and a little bit of critical strike chance. In Diablo 4, Every class has their own unique system. For druids, it's the spirit system. As you're leveling as a druid, you'll probably notice that mobs occasionally would drop something called druidic spirit offerings. These offerings can be given to animal spirits to unlock boons to make you even stronger. Once you obtain a good amount of offerings, here's how to use them. Your first 50 offerings will go to the Wolf Spirit for the Energized Boon, giving you more Spirit Generation. Your next 75 offerings will go to the Eagle Spirit for the Swooping Attacks Boon, giving you a lot of attack speed. Gather 75 offerings again and give it to the Deer Spirit for the Wariness Boon, helping us stay alive against Elites. Now you're probably wondering, what about the Snake? Well, unfortunately the Snake Spirit doesn't really provide us with anything helpful, so I wouldn't worry too much about it. Alright, now that we've gone over the skill tree and the spirit boons, next let's talk about gear and the stats to look for on that gear. To be honest, as you're leveling, there really should be only one rule of thumb when it comes to gear. And that is, green is good. If there are more green stats than red when you're comparing gear, then I would just put them on. The reason for this is because the gear you get from World Tier 3 and beyond is way better and will replace anything that you currently have on your character. However, if you are a stat nerd like me, then these are the stats that I'd recommend for every piece of gear. For weapons, if you're looking for any two-handed weapon with high DPS, and if you end up finding a legendary two-hander, 
and go ahead and upgrade it a couple times at the blacksmith and socket it with sapphire gems, giving you more damage to help with the leveling process. For armor, there are a bunch of stats we're looking for, but I want to point out a few that are a little bit more important than the others. Tornado ranks on gloves is a nice boost to our main damage skill. Movement speed on boots helps us with the zoom zoom and willpower gives us even more spirit generation. And if you haven't noticed, that's pretty damn important for this build. If you end up finding some decent legendary armors with good aspects and free sockets, then go ahead and throw some rubies in there for some extra life. For jewelry, spirit cost reduction is nice on amulets for even more tornadoes and any type of damage is good for rings. Find a legendary amulet ring with a socket? Put a skull in there for extra armor. All right, now that we know what type of gear we're looking for, let's talk about the Codex of Power and the best legendary aspects suited for this build. The Codex of Power is where you can imprint and extract legendary aspects on gear. The legendary aspect that I would recommend for this build is the Aspect of the Umbral, which is, again, another form of spirit generation. This aspect can be obtained through completing the Champion's Demise Dungeon in the Dry Steps region. Once you get this aspect, wait until you get a legendary ring to imprint it on, and then upgrade the ring a few times at the Jeweler, and now this ring can be used for the remainder of the leveling process. Another legendary aspect that is extremely helpful for this build is the Storm Chasers aspect, which is a huge boost in quality of life. Unfortunately, this can only be found on a random legendary drop, but if you do end up finding it, slap it on to an upgraded legendary amulet. Okay, let's use everything that we've learned so far and apply it to the next part of the guide. First off, there are plenty of ways to level up in this game. What I'm going to show you is how I did it, but feel free to level up however which way you want. If this is your first character in Diablo 4, then this is what I would do from levels 1 to 50. From 1 to 30, you'll be doing the campaign. You'll find yourself under leveled at some point, but the main story is fairly easy, so you'll be fine. However, if you do feel uncomfortable about being under leveled, then go ahead and do some side quest or dungeon in the meantime. From levels 30 to 40, you're going to get on top of your mount and start exploring, unlocking all the waypoints, completing all the strongholds, and touching all the altars of Lilith. We do these daunting tasks not only to level up, but to also get Renown 3 in all regions. I know this seems like a lot of work, but remember that you only have to farm Renown on one character because all the benefits that you get will apply to any and all of your future characters for that season. Once you spent a day or two doing this, from levels 40 to 50, just do the Tree of Whisper objectives while prioritizing dungeons. These give good XP, good items, and you can unlock some decent aspects to fill up your Codex of Power. Now, if you already have an established character in Diablo 4, and this isn't your first rodeo, then honestly I'd recommend just doing the Tree of Whispers from 1 to 50. Yes, there are probably more efficient ways of leveling, like spamming the same dungeon over and over and over again, or killing the same mobs in a certain area of the open world over and over and over again, but I've tried these methods and to me they just weren't really that much fun and not even that much faster. So Tree of Whispers for life, baby. All right, now that we've gone over the leveling process, let's move on to the last part of the guide. Tips and tricks. The difficulty that you should be playing on throughout the leveling process is World Tier 1. The amount of extra XP and gold World Tier 2 gives is not worth the extra amount of time it takes to kill stuff. The only time that you'll be doing anything in World Tier 2 is completing the Capstone Dungeon in order to unlock World Tier 3. The next thing that I would recommend is using the interactive map. I'll go ahead and link it down below in the description. This map literally tells you where everything is. Dungeons, side quests, waypoints, altars, you name it. And this will especially help you when farming Renown in every region. The next tip is to level up your potion. As you level up your character, you probably noticed an up arrow appears next to your potion icon, occasionally. As you level up your character, you probably notice an up arrow appears next to your potion icon from time to time. This means it's time to upgrade your potion at your nearest alchemist. 
to make sure you have the materials to upgrade your potion, make sure you are picking up all the materials you find in the open world, and this mostly includes herbs and ore. Speaking of materials, salvage everything except for legendaries during the leveling process. The reason why is because each legendary item comes with a legendary aspect and you might want to extract some of these aspects to imprint them on your end game gear. I do want to note that once the leveling process is over, you'll actually want to sell the gear you find to the vendor occasionally for some gold because you are going to need some gold later on for upgrades. So with that being said, save your gold. The only time you should be spending your gold while leveling up is upgrading your weapon amulet and rings no more than three times to help with the leveling process otherwise say that shit trust me you're going to need it now let's talk about combos here is the general druid combo i would recommend using when fighting elites or bosses here we go pop earthen bulwark to gain barrier and fortify activate hurricane dealing damage over time slowing enemies and having a chance to apply vulnerable Smack him around with Storm Strike to generate some spirit and giving even a higher chance to apply vulnerable. Then keep spamming Tornado as much as possible for max damage output. Use Wolves on cooldown after this combo because Wolves deal more damage to crowd controlled enemies. And if you need to position yourself better, if you're in a shit spot, trample your ass on out of there. And there we have it y'all. The best Druid leveling guide for Diablo 4. And hey. If you guys enjoyed the video and or found it helpful, then I'm glad. I plan to make leveling guides for all the classes in Diablo 4, with Barbarian now being the last one I have to complete. I also plan to make a best endgame build guide for each class as well. So if you're interested in anything Diablo 4, then throw me a sub, will you? Other than that, thank you so much for watching. I truly appreciate it. And remember to stay a while and listen. Peace out.